So I've popped over to the plots because we had rain yesterday. I was, you don't even know how happy I was. I woke up, heard that rain, and the first thing I did was, before I headed to work, was I shot over the plot. And as you can see, it rained here. And it was lovely just to see, just to see the plot being naturally watered and, you know, giving it a good water that no hose pipe can ever do. But I was, you know, I was over the moon. So let's have a look around. So I keep getting this, <laughs> this pigeon, honest to God. He, it's like he's a resident on this plot and it's not good because he keeps targeting the peas that I put out. So I'm going to have to net these. Not these ones, I think they've had it, but I've got more sown. Let me show you. So the cabbages that I sowed the other day, um, they've all popped up now as well, which I'm over the moon about. And also the purple sugar snap peas that I've sown. So they're a second one. The first one's already on this obelisk by here. I'll show you those now. So as you can see, they've all popped the heads up. Now they'll go out in about a week or so's time. And also some more Mexican blue corn. I put an extra few in just in case. And also the purple sprouting broccoli, the Caroflex F1 and also the ornamental cabbage. So they haven't done too bad. In this heat and humidity, it doesn't take long for those seedlings to shoot up. So leave them outside, they'll be fine. You don't need no greenhouses now. Absolutely not. The pumpkins and the squashes now, they're looking grand as well. And also the corn is shooting up, so happy days. I am gonna pop back up later on. I've got a few jobs down on the grapevine garden to do. Um, a plot holder asked me for quite a while ago to just fix the fence. and. I finally get around to doing it. It's just one of those things I keep forgetting, but it's being done. I need to move the water barrel because the, the weight of the water barrels subside in the soil and then that's damaged the fence. So I'll show you that later on when I pop back over. So I've popped into the polytunnel and two things that I gave up on this year was my turmeric and the ginger. Then nothing was happening. You know, I was giving a little bit of water now and again, but nothing was happening. I literally was, I was going to throw them in the compost deep sometime this week, but let me show you what's happened the ginger is shooting up and i've looked through the turmeric i've had a little mosey down and i've seen that the shoots coming on some of the turmeric as well so hopefully now with this heat humidity and i'll keep them up here now to keep an eye on them but look ginger that's the thing i love about gardening is that they will have successes you'll have failures but you'll also have surprises you'll come over and one minute it'll be there and one minute of eating, and then one minute you're just giving up on something, and the next is shooting out that soil, and is, you know, it's it's it just it just really you know what I'm on about, you know what I'm talking about. It's that joy of finding something that you've put a seed into the ground, and it's it's brought life. But you know the excitement I'm on about. So we've got my first yellow courgette under there, and they're soon shooting up. The green ones are not far behind, and also the pumpkins. The baby boo are on that side, or that side, and these are the jappy little. So hopefully they'll shoot all up these archways. Speaking of archways, I really need to get those two archways built as well because there's pumpkins that need to go in. They need to be growing on now. So there's always loads of jobs. You know what I'm on about. You'll have a list and put them on and on and on. But another thing I want to talk about: <laughs> these olives. So the tree has all this bloom on it as well, and. As much as a weird shape for an olive tree, it's been neglected for so many years. I actually like it, it's wispy. It gives a nice little bit of structure to the plot, but yeah, I just like it. So I've shown that because a few people have said, why is it called the fig and olive plot when there's just figs and no olives? But there is an olive tree. And also people have been asking as well, new viewers. So welcome to my channel if you're new. I don't do that enough because the channel grows and I just presume it's the same people all the time, but it's not. So I have the Grapevine Garden, which is the original, and then I've got the Fig and Olive, which I've taken on in October last year, and this one has been more of a project. So that's why I might be a little bit more because the Polytonger, it's got loads growing on you, but the Grapevine Garden is the heart of, the, of it really because I grow loads of food down there. All the beds are the same size and the chickens are down there, but yeah. That will be shown loads more soon, I promise you, because that's where all the harvest is going to be. This is like, this is the fun, this is all the pumpkins, and this is all the stuff that I don't really need to do that much with. I just tick along corn, pumpkins, flowers, and whatnot. So yeah, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Pop a comment below, say hello, because 
I like to, you know, I like to interact with all the viewers, as all my old viewers, old viewers, my veteran viewers, the original viewers, I, viewers, normally comment on and I interact with everyone. So say hello, pop a comment below, and it'd be nice to see some new friendly faces. And speaking of which, if you haven't, pop along to my Instagram here. I post a picture on there every single day of the plots. So pop over, you know, join the Instagram page and that would be fantastic as well. Right, let's pop down to the Great Vine Garden and let's have a little look around there. I'm going to pop back over later, which I mentioned, fix the fence, pop, um, take some sprouts that are desperate to go down and they need to go in. And yeah, there's a few things I need to do down there to, um, later on, but I'll pop down in now um, because I want to show you something that I've got planned. So we're at the Grapevine Garden and I want to show you a few things that are going to change on this plot over the autumn. As you all know, autumn and winter for me is project time, changing things ready for spring and summer. So these are the ideas that I've got in my head so far, which are worrying. So drastically I'm thinking of either extending the coop out to here, getting rid of the shed, or moving this shed down to here and getting rid of this one. Now I've decided that owning three sheds, a greenhouse, a mini polytunnel, a big polytunnel is too much for two plots because I'm, I don't really need that much food or I don't need that much protection like having an extra greenhouse. So the other idea is to get rid of the greenhouse. Now a few people said, keep the greenhouse, keep the greenhouse, but I generally am not using it. I wanted to use it this year and I plan to empty it all out put some spare tomatoes in there, but I generally just not using it. And the other reason is I've got a mini polytunnel here as well, which I'm going to keep, but I think I might move that later on. And I'll talk about that in a future video because I've got ideas for that as well. But I, I don't think I need all those, those things. So unless you can change my mind in the comments of like why I should keep the greenhouse as well, it's just, I'm generally not using it. Like, unless, I don't know, unless you can think of something I can use it for, but I just think that space could be another two beds, open ground, I could grow things on there I actually really like. There's no point me keeping things just because it could be handy in the future. And this is the reason why I've decided about the sheds. And that's the decision I've come from, is that I think the chickens will always stay here, and unless, you know, something drastic changes, but it doesn't matter if they lay any eggs or five eggs or none eggs, I don't care. They, they, I'm happy for them to stay here. I had a few of those were rescues and I knew they weren't producing back then and I've had them a few years now, so they're staying. But I feel like they could have a bit more room and maybe I could have less shed spaces and building spaces on this plot. Now the idea I've got is that this coop will go out to here and then I'll add, I'll turn these beds around and I'll keep the beds going down and I'll have a few more beds. This one will be moved as well, so the path will go straight down. And I think that these three metal raised beds, they can go as well up to their fig and olive plot. And this area here by the pond will be a nice seating area. And I promised myself I would have a seating area on both plots. So that's definitely gonna go there because I like to come down. I like the fact that Jane Kelly has got this nice table up in, under her tree and she can show her harvest, she can talk on there, it's nice and shaded. I haven't got that anywhere, I just, you know, I'm always clambering on a little tray and trying to show you what I've got and stuff, and I just think that'd be a nice asset to the plot, is to have somewhere to sit, show the produce, talk about plans, eat there, and I think that's another thing I need to change because the plot needs to be person-centered to you and your needs, and they're things that I feel like this plot is limited on. And in a future video, I mean very future video, um, I'm going to be showing you all the solar, I'm going to say the solar system, the solar panel system on the fig and olive plot that's going to be incorporated, the shed and the polyten and the new lights, um, irrigation system, everything's going to be fitted into there. I'm going to do myself on a budget and also I'm going to show you the one on this site, on the Great Van Garden. And I know you've seen in previous videos me using spotlights, floodlights, when I've had to come over in the middle of the night. I've got a pond pump here, the lights in the greenhouse, the coop, everyone has lights and power as well, so I can charge my phone, play radio and things like that. So it is handy to have, especially when you're coming into autumn now when it gets darker. And with my shifts at the hospital, I do need to come over here sometimes when it's a little bit darker after a long shift. There's a chicken quarrel going on. So yeah, that's the plan for that as well, to bring that in and show you, show you all um, how to do the solar 
on and are really quite cheap as well and um, it's not as complicated as people think so i think i'll go through that setup as well show you how to do it so if you're interested in that pop a comment below and let me know why you would why you would kind of want your solar panel system for on your plot and i'll kind of introduce that into the videos as well so this wasn't kind of planned but this is the, all the future plans for this channel for the plots as well because i've got two of them obviously i'm not expanding anymore so october time there's not gonna be a third plot absolutely not god i don't know where i get the time for two but i do and i'm absolutely love the fact that i've got two to have this maneuverability and being able to move things around so i've even talked about putting the greenhouse up onto the fig and olive plot so i've got kind of an extra space to have all my seedlings and things in there rather than it impacting on the poly tunnel at the start of the season <sighs> help me out guys <laughs> what do i do so i'm sorry this was a bit of a waffling on video but i kind of want to show you, you know, i always want to show you my ideas and what things change and i also like to show you you know that nothing stays the same forever and th these will always change and and your gardens and your allotments will definitely do it as well every season you'll change things up you'll move things around you'll try things in different spaces and that is one of the funnest things about having an allotment or a garden is that it's yours it's your canvas to make the art that you want on it another drastic decision was the pear trees as well because i don't really like the pears i use them for my um for my pig a little pig i use them for my fig pear and apple jam however that's it so i'm thinking do i have two pear trees on the plots and they're not producing pears very well either they're very old they're very cankered up a little bit and they they're bendy over and stuff so i think should i take them out and put one new pear in and yeah move it into a different place because it does shade all this area behind here so that's another thing i might do in the autumn is get rid of those put a new one in and yeah i didn't want to with a fit with the pears because i kind of like having the trees there but they're just not producing and they they just they've been neglected for so many years before i had the site that um i can bring them back into shape and hopefully get a nice good crop off them so and they also impact on the nutrient go into the grapevine as well and this is the grapevine garden but i need to show some more of that i think because someone asked is there grapes on your actual plot and there is but i need to prune it now as well i need to prune them back make sure that i have lovely grapes this year because that's one of my new that's one of my new goals for this year right i'm done so i'm gonna pop back over later on i think so I've popped over to the grapevine garden because I've got a few jobs. It's the evening, so it's a lot cooler. But I want to take, take a look at this. How beautiful is this rose arch? It is absolutely stunning on the plot. So I thought I'd come up and have a look because one of my neighbours have said that there's a breach in my fence. So let's have a look. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put my Bosch pump into here, pump all the water out and move that barrel and then repair this fence. Let's go. So while fixing the fence, I noticed that down here, that loganberry plant has absolutely gone crazy and it's full of beautiful loganberry. So a nice little harvest as well. So maybe I'll have some loganberry jam. So I'm glad the fence is all fixed. I thought it'd be better to come up because obviously I needed to empty that tank. So I thought I'd water the plot with it, which was perfect timing. And then I'm just glad it's done. I'm glad that fence is done now because it's been a niggling little thing that I need to get done for a while. I think now I'm going to do this. So the bed that I pulled out all the garlic, I think I'm going to put my sprouts in here and also plant out some sunflowers around the plot. So let's get that done. Job done. 
It always feels good when you tick off those jobs and those are things that I've been a nightmare of holding back and doing. So sprouts are in, sunflowers are in, fence is done. I'm Danny and this is The Grapevine Garden.